In today's video, we're doing a comprehensive comparison of 11 identical rods. <laughs> They're not identical because that would be a rubbish comparison. <laughs> they are, we've got 11 rods with us. They're all 12 foot and they're all three pound test curve. Plus the best thing about them, they're under 100 quid. So in theory, being the same test curve and the same length, they should have a similar feel and reach similar distances, but that might not be the case. So basically we asked all of the suppliers that we could think of to send us a rod within that specification so that we could you know, have a bit of a test of them. If of course there is a brand that you haven't seen within this comparison, it's because they basically chose not to take part. Exactly, and we don't know what rods is from what brand because they're all taped up. So we won't know this until the end. We're basically be splitting this up into three different categories. We're gonna be doing a casting test, which is also gonna be uh, accuracy, but also how they feel, sort of distance range. And then we're gonna move on to aesthetics and also the test curve, sort of play in action of the rods themselves. And just to put as well, to clarify, these are all 12 foot. I know Luke's probably thrown out the perspective a little bit there to my right, but they are all 12 foot. We're on a slope. And then obviously finally, we'll do the big reveal and let you guys know exactly which one we favor as individuals. Let's crack on with it. Well, hopefully not crack. Some of them might, they're cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the first one we're gonna test is casting, which to some is probably the most important part. So to keep things as fair as possible, we are gonna be using the same reel, the same line, obviously, because it's on that reel, the same size lead. So I've got a three ounce lead here, and we've got a marker clipped up at 75 yards, and this reel is also clipped up at 75 yards. So it's keeping things as fair as possible. So then the only difference, or the only variable is gonna be the rod. Obviously some things can change, weather might play a part in things. We've got a slight crosswind, but it's not too bad. So as it stands, it should be pretty plain sailing. So let's, uh, let's take this rod. This is rod number one, conveniently. And uh, let's get the first rod out and see how this feels. All right, so here I am, I'm ready with the first rod. And like I say, we've got 11 rods to do. And to make this as fair as possible, obviously I've gone through the variables, but we are gonna do three casts each on each rod. So obviously that's a hell of a lot of casts. So we're not gonna show you every single one of them casts. So we're gonna do a bit of a montage, but if there's anything that stands out to us, then we make sure that we cut the montage and put in uh, a little bit of knowledge, which is rare on this channel. So let's go for the first one. <laughs> Didn't Didn't actually actually <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's honest. But that is why we're doing free casts because there's nothing to say that that's the rod's fault. That's my dodgy casting, so I know that I've got to give it a little bit more this time. And annoyingly, if I don't quite hit the clip, it goes into a lot of weed. So I'm gonna make sure I don't have that issue again. Maybe the glasses are impairing your vision. I don't think it's the glasses fault. Oh God, that couldn't have gone better. <laughs> <laughs> First cast of the video, you don't hit the clip. <laughs> All right, let's go for cast number two. Oh, to be fair, that nearly broke the fins off. The <laughs> you made up for it with that one. Yeah. I mean, even the first one that didn't hit the clip, it was accurate in the sense that it followed that line exactly how it should. So let's bring this in and do the last one. Okay, third and final one for me. Again, the right line hit the clip a little bit late, but it did hit it. But overall, I'd say that is, that's pretty accurate, to be fair. I'm not sure how it will do in longer distances. So it did feel a little bit soft, but then I haven't really used a three pound test curve 12 foot for some time, so. It's just getting a gauge of it, really. Who's going next? Ian's I'll been go next. raring to go. Ian, go Come for on it. Then. Okay, so rod number one. Uh, Luke's already had his cast with this one. I'm gonna have a go now. First thing I've noticed is I feel like the handle length's quite short. So straight away, I don't think this is gonna be a distance rod, but um, let's give it a cast and see what you reckon. Oh, didn't hit the clip. Wow. <laughs> that was worse than Luke's. It probably was. <laughs> right, pressure's off me on my first cast. I'm gonna do that again. Luke had a, a first, first try <laughs> that no one saw. I think we gotta leave this stuff in, it's honest. <laughs> like Luke said, um, it's been a little while since I've cast a 12 foot rod, especially a three pound test curve one. So uh, 
it all feels a little bit alien at the moment. Let's get <laughs> this weed off and have another go. Okay, second car, still didn't hit the clip. I certainly am feeling that this rod, I guess maybe it just doesn't have enough backbone and I feel like I'm having to put an awful lot of energy to actually get that distance in. I would say that with my normal fishing rods that that sort of power into a cast, I would have hit a clip at 75 yards without any problems whatsoever. So maybe that is a trait of this rod. Um, so far, I don't think this is gonna be in my top three. Just Personally. Does that sound like an excuse to you? It does sound like an does excuse, like yeah. An excuse, yeah. I mean, it is a bit soft, but it was quite accurate, I thought, which we're not seeing either side of that from Ian. <laughs> <laughs> I can literally hear them talking gonna about me in the day, background. Yeah. It's going to be a long day. Right, cast number three. I better make up for it on this one. <laughs> oh, 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 it's looking good. There we go. Yeah, couldn't one. have got much closer on that one. So, yeah, definitely come to the conclusion. This one is a bit soft. Uh, certainly for my liking, but we've got loads more rods to get through, so I'm sure there'll be a couple in there that I do enjoy. Curly's up next. Hope he doesn't embarrass himself with the casting. I've given it the bigger now, I'm making fun of your first two casts. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't mind the small handle. I feel like I can actually get a bit more whip in a rod. Leverage. Leverage. Oh, that's very high. God. Four. Hit the clip though, mate. So yeah, initially I'm thinking that felt like quite a soft tip. I did let go a bit early, so I'll try and let go a bit later and try and fire it more direct at the uh, mark float. But compared to the other two, I hit the clip on my first cast, so. Oh, look at me, I'm Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Joe the ego is coming out again. <laughs> out in force today. <laughs> they love it. That's better. Oh, oh, couldn't have got any closer. So yeah, that one I let go a little bit later and it was within a foot of the float, uh, maybe just behind it. That last two. So second cast, I'm hitting dead accurate. If I can make this on the third cast, then very impressed with first impressions. Kind of uh, a bit of Ian's input about putting a bit more effort in. It does seem that you need to, to get that butt section. Yeah, again, nice and accurate. So the initial cast, I just needed to put a bit more in, let go at a better time. But second and third cast were very, very, I'd be happy to put two rods that close on a spot if I was fishing that way. So uh, you've seen us do this on one rod, we got to do this on 10 more rods. So uh, both of us, well, all of us are going to have rods like, uh, arms like Popeye by the end of the day, I expect. But uh, we'll keep you filled in on any uh, key points when we try different rods. Time to switch the reel over onto rod two. I don't get where this whole ego Joe thing's come from, but <laughs> I'm just running with it now. <laughs> that was the last one, yeah. Uh, we got another 11 to do. My arms haven't felt like this since secondary school. A lot of usage then as well in the forearm. <laughs> we both know that was only about two years ago. <laughs> Not a secondary school. I feel like I always look short in these because I've either got a short chair no, or I'm down the hill. No, you are just short. You can't get away from that fact. <laughs> well, we have done our rod, rod test, our casting, and uh, well, should we go through the findings? Yeah, unfortunately I've been demoted to the log because I didn't bring a chair today. Um, yeah. Even so, you're still sitting by so the let's, let's try and make this a, a quick piece because it's not the most comfortable. But uh, we're going to try and collate all of our thoughts from each rod go through them one by one, then whittle it down to our top three and see if anything comes out on top as a top one. Now you've seen our first response or first thoughts on rod one, just to give you an idea of what we're doing for the test. The rest of the rods are gonna go through and just give snippets of what we first thought. So rod two, I think you, we did it in an order you cast first. So your yeah, initial so thoughts. Should we, should we work this way? Now we did save notes on our phone because, <laughs> there's a robin on top of the camera. <laughs> we save notes on our phone because there's a lot of rods. So there's a lot of information and they're all obviously a bit different. Uh, rod two, I did notice just how tippy it is. So this in theory could mean that it's going to take a little bit less of a cast to actually ping it out there because the tip will then almost catapult it. Might be completely wrong. But after a few casts, it felt a much stronger blank than what the first one did. Oh, sorry, are we... Um... Yeah, I just seen a picture of the Robin on the camera. He's gone now. Okay. Carry on. Uh, 
<laughs> I mean, that was about it. Yeah, it felt stronger than the first one, the blank. Felt like it could cast a bit further as well. Um, because it was quite tippy, I think I mentioned earlier, it, it felt like it would almost catapult that that led that bit further. So I don't know how you guys felt on that one. Yeah, well, Ian was next. Yeah, um, I, I like the handle length. That's a lot nicer. And the blank itself is a lot thicker. So feels like it's got a bit more backbone. Let's see if I can't hit the clip on this one. Fingers crossed, eh? I, I noticed obviously Rod 2 was quite a thicker, thicker blank in comparison to the others. I felt like it had a better sort of energy to distance ratio, if you like, like so it seemed to work quite well, but overall quite a soft blank and I wouldn't necessarily say it was aimed at distance. But then again, these are three pound rods, so they're not all, all in all out sort of distance casting tools, are they? So. And of course I heard Ian's initial reaction when he cast out, but I've got pretty much the same written down and less effort was required than it did on the first rod. I'm very accurate on them. Uh, we'll get on to what our top rods were later on, but it is, it's up there actually, this, on my top three. So I found it quite an uh, accurate rod actually myself. But that moves us on to rod number three. Yeah, so just something else to point out, along the bottom of the screens, you're gonna be seeing what each of these rods are. We still don't know this at this moment in time. We're not gonna be peeling back the stickers until the end of this video. So yeah, you know what rods we're talking about, but we just know a number. Um, so rod three, I really liked. Fairly accurate, not too floppy. It's always a good sign. I thought it was a really well balanced rod, felt really accurate. And again, it felt like it could go a lot further. Um, the aesthetics is something we'll come on to in a bit, but I did like the aesthetics of it as well. So again, like I say, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but yeah, it was, it was a good performer, put it that way. Yeah, so I had rod three as a very nice feel, strong, responsive, uh, now that, that is a different rod altogether. So first cast, straight to the clip. The wind is actually pushing in quite strong at the minute and that was still only a foot off the marker. That I would be absolutely happy with putting three rods on a spot. No problems whatsoever. Um, good casting power. I was casting into a headwind at that point. And and it the didn't clip. seem to be any issue. <laughs> didn't seem to be any issue at all. Yeah. I did hit the clip. I'll have to go back through the um, to see if you did hit the clip. And also uh, I noticed it had a really slim cork handle, which is uh, definitely a, a win in my book. So, Yeah, so with it, I, I felt it much more robust. And again, I think it could cast a lot further. But when it came to the handle, yeah, the handle's really long compared to the first one we did. I actually found it was too long of a handle. For my personal preference, I prefer a slightly shorter handle because I feel I can pull it into my chest a bit easier. So I wasn't putting my hand right at the, the very base of the handle. So if you like a longer handle, that might be an option for you. But compared to the first couple, I felt it was quite a bit longer. Yeah, so moving on to rod four. There's a lot of flex in it. I mean, it's hitting the distance. It's hitting the clip. I don't know if I'd want to put it much further. But something that I do like about it, I do like the guides and the flared butt grip is actually quite nice as well. So when you do cast, it feels nice that you know exactly where your hand's got to be and it gives, it gives a good grip. Um, I didn't make very extensive notes on this. All I've put is very soft. So hopefully you guys can help out a bit more on that. Yeah, uh, number four, yeah? Number four. Yeah, there's so many, <laughs> just, a, <laughs> just a muddle. Uh, slim, bank, uh, slim blank, fairly soft throughout does have the sort of newer sort of thin style guides which obviously gives the impression that it may be based around a distance style rod do you know i'm actually really shocked at how much difference there is in these rods like power wise don't be fooled it is really quite soft yeah i, I got very much similar oh that felt soft my actual description was a bit floppy with not really feeling like much backbone. But having said that- Just like Luke. It was very, it was very wow. accurate. I still, I, guys. Sorry, Joe, have your moment. <laughs> I did still cast very accurately, but I just didn't feel it's as controlled as some of the others that I'd already used so far. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, you can move on now, Luke. Thanks, Joe. Um, so rod number five, that felt quite a nice all rounder, actually. It felt fairly accurate pinged out quite nicely and felt like it had a lot more to give as well. So let's do a couple more casts of this. Um, it felt like it had a lot more power in the blank, but I didn't find it was as accurate. It, it felt like I could cast it a lot further. I was hitting the clip with ease at the 75 yards, but like I say, I just didn't feel as accurate as some of the others to me. Is that one of the ones where you wiped out the float? No. You did that was, three times though, didn't you? Yeah, but that was on the more accurate one. the ones you snapped really. off on? Uh, 
Ian, so what was your findings on Rod 5? Uh, rod 5? <laughs> um, like instantly, I feel like we've overloaded that with a 3-ounce lead. Oh, it's not bad on a cast, though. That surprised me for such a thin blank. It actually went out there quite nicely. Uh, quite a soft tip, I thought, but it definitely felt like it had a good bit of power, good bit of backbone. Um, so yeah, I actually put that up in my top three. I won't tell you which one just yet, but uh, yeah, that was probably one of my favourite ones. Uh, well, a bit different to me because I've put down fairly nondescript. I didn't find it excelled anything, but it did its job. So it's kind of, there's a few of these rods you'll find of my descriptions fall in this bracket of they've done what they need to, but I wouldn't say they're excelling, but they're not doing anything bad. But this is also coming from I think most of us use stiffer rods on the hull. I normally, my 12 foot's are three and a quarter, and then I've, my most used rods are nine foot, three and a half. So none of us are very used to using three foot, uh, three, foot three foot, 12 pound rods, 12 foot, three pound rods. So it's a bit different. So you've got to bear that in mind that all of these descriptions are probably based on the fact that we're, we're very used to stiffer rods. Yeah, because to be honest, most of the ones that we've, or, in most of the rods, we've actually said they're quite soft. soft. So if we just wipe out that they're quite soft, because <laughs> naturally a three pound would be softer than what we're used to, like you say. Um, so moving on to rod number six. Well, that could easily go a lot further. That was easy to hit that 75 yards. I've actually put this in my top three. So yeah, I, I put it could easily cast further, a little bit floppy, but very accurate and a pretty fast recovery. So we'll come on to that in a little bit um, because we go through a few slow motion clips and things like that. Yeah, so uh, rod six for me, good power delivery, good accuracy and fast recovery. So yeah, that's definitely up there, definitely. Yeah. And again, so is your, that in your top three as it well? It is in my top three. It's yeah. in my top three as well. We'll go through which number it is, but so yeah, rod six. Oh, that's nice. Feels quite light as well. Oh, first cast and that's bang on the money. Quite soft though, reading in, but that felt good. Super accurate straight away. I'm at my first cast, I think I nearly took the fit the veins off the uh, float. Veins? Bragging. Veins? Veins on veins. the float? The little bit. Oh, I thought oh. they were veins. Could be veins. Thank Could you. They? Okay, okay. Ah, well, I've lost my train of thought now. Oh, but yeah, it's very, very accurate. All three landed probably within, I don't know, that big of an area. It was, I was very impressed with them. And uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you now, that came out on my top number one spot. I thought we were going through that in a bit. We will, but I'm, I'm this up there. You're just over excited, aren't you? Uh, so rod number seven is stiff. You're feeling all right, Luke. Yeah, that wasn't the best cast, was it? Didn't feel overly accurate, that one. That was in next door's lake. <laughs> next door's lake? There's only one lake here. That's how bad it was. <laughs> Pretty much cast back home. I didn't get on very well with it, but I know you guys liked it. Um, I found it quite stiff, quite inaccurate and I snapped off. <laughs> so it wasn't a highlight for me. But and your head went. Um, my, head, my head went. Uh, it's all downhill from there. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get on with it that well. But, uh, yes, I put a very stiff blank in comparison to the others. That, that I would put as a long range rod. Don't know if that maybe almost comes across as maybe being a little bit more premium than some of the others. Um, better based around sort of distance fishing type scenario. Uh, I do suspect the blank, you probably would want heavier leads to help you compress that blank to really get the most out of it. Yeah, and much the same. I'm not really giving much initial thoughts on these, like they're all doing a job. Like it's trying to find out which one's feeling better. It doesn't feel like it's got much character. Not much character. Not much we'll, character. Put, we'll put it down as that. I put cast very well, very accurate. Nothing fancy, but definitely feels capable of bigger casts. So it's funny that all three of us felt that it had a bit more backbone. So that's, that's interesting for a three pound test curve, that all of these are obviously three pound test curve. So to find a three pound that you think a three ounce of lead isn't enough for. Yeah. Yeah. I'd hate to think what the three and a half's are like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so rod number eight. That felt really accurate. It just it just seemed to fly exactly where I where I aimed it. <laughs> There's no discrepancy there, no going off to one side. Yeah, felt very, very nice that actually. Very accurate, strong blank, top three. Wow, uh, I've got uh, no comment. I've also, <laughs> so, I've also it, got nothing really to say. Yeah, it was just kind of a, a fishing rod. It, it cast. It's, it's on, funny, I just yeah. got on well with that one. Yeah, yeah, so. Okay. It's another one of those ones that I said just falls into the bracket of 
yes, it, it reached the distance. Yes, I cast out, but didn't feel great for me and just did a job. But it's funny that you found that it's in your top three. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Rod nine. Him? <laughs> uh, okay, so Rod number nine, um, just done the first cast and that is quite possibly the softest rod of the test, for me at least. It was, uh, yeah, I think just maybe a close range, sort of mid-range type fishing rod. We've done a very selective casting thing of 75 yards. If you're fishing closer in, then that could be fine. Yeah, if you're fishing smaller lakes and the actual playing action, which we come on to next, is, is more important than getting a distance, then it would be a very good rod for playing fish. But for, I mean, we did hit the distance with it, but it was very soft. And number 10 was a bit of a wild card because this was a three piece. Yeah, which you don't see that many of. We'll also, no. just grab it a second, number 10. It also has what I would guess is 30 mil eye yeah. and yeah. fairly uniform, like the, the change between the 30 mil to the top, there isn't a huge difference. So quite small eyes for a 12 foot. It's a three piece and you, <laughs> I think your description at the start was where do you uh, make the lead drop to? Because yeah. there's two spigots. <laughs> So this is a bit of a wild card, but. Surprisingly good, actually. It's a three piece with what I'm guessing is a 30 mil eye down to smaller. And it casts right, actually, a surprise, but I do think this would be more akin to surface fishing. Maybe we'll have a floater on there or something. Who knows, but it's done the job, surprisingly. It was. It was very soft, I thought, but yeah, I don't know if that's <laughs> helping anyone. Um, <laughs> it was very soft, but it did hit the distance every time. I wouldn't want to push it further, if I'm honest. Um, but again, if you're fishing smaller waters or surface rod, I think we surface rod. Yeah, I think for rod, a yeah. surface fishing rod, that would make a nice. Or nice you just take the top tip off the, <laughs> the top section and <laughs> the, have a, wow, I'll leave you with that. Um, rod eleven. <sighs> Clip, clipped right there. So Rod 11 was an interesting one because it felt like it's probably one of the cheaper rods out of them. Obviously we still don't know what's what, we don't know what costs what, but quite whippy. And that hit it pretty accurately, fairly easily. So that's a good sign. I was very surprised by this. It was really accurate, it cast really well it will hit further than 75 yards. It nearly made it into my top three. Yeah, I, I agree. It feels like a cheaper rod, yeah. like like the sort of, but performs like a, I would say the higher end of the under hundred pound bracket. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was surprising. Good amount of backbone. Decent feeling rod, just from that first cast. Interesting. I just put down again, it, it fell into that bracket of mid-range did what it needed to but nothing exceptional it didn't do anything bad mm. so should we go through our top three top three so yeah. what did you put as your third best luke third best i had rod number call the suspense it's like the x factor final <laughs> <laughs> um i'd say rod number eight Number eight. That's my third best. Okay. I didn't even have that in my top three. No, definitely not. Interesting. Hmm. So what was your third? Uh, rod five. Again, not in Which my I list. I don't think you guys, I don't think either of you liked. Either. Okay, yeah. and my third best was rod two. I didn't have that. No, I didn't have that. <laughs> all, all of <laughs> right. our third bests are completely like individual tastes. No one had the same. So let's move on to rod two. So second best, I'd go with Rod number three. Not in okay. my top three. That is in my top three. Yeah. And I'm probably about to give it away, but my <laughs> number two rod was actually rod six. Okay. That was my second favourite. Okay. Well, I'll quickly do my second then best because my second best was rod number seven, but my best was rod six, which is your okay, second, which best. Is my second best. So which is your, my first best. Your first best. Rod six. First best, first best. Second, second best. best, yeah. So it's the only one, it's if I'm right, that's in all three of our top, and it's top first, to first, and second. Yeah. So you guys can see the result of this test at home. Rod six, I think, is quite conclusively the best one out of the three. But what was your top? My top one was rod 
for three. Which was my second. Wasn't in my list. Which was your second. Okay, so that would potentially be the second best, best. overall. It's close. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. So, so go, should then. we do a few more tests with the top? Top two, I guess, then. Top two. Mod six. Yeah. And mod six and mod two. Let's see if we can cast them out a bit further. See if we can push them to their limit of a hundred pound yeah. budget rod. Maybe a few slow mo shots. Clip. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We'll clip it at fifty then. <laughs> Maybe a few slow mo shots. We can see how the action is on the cast recovery. Yeah. What made those rods stand out to us? Because it's all well and good saying this one's best, but there's got to be a reason for that. Whether it's the weight, the balance with the reel, mm -hmm. how they recover. So yeah, let's dive into that a bit more. Let's do it. Oh, I wanted to say let's do it. You stole that from me. <laughs> Well, we'd have been waiting forever. Right, you were going in that piece. <laughs> it's because I hadn't actually categorised one, two, and three. So we've now got our top two. They're very, very closely linked to being joint first, really, because this Pretty is much. my favourite. I think your favourite. Yep. yep and my your top second favourite. Yeah. That one was my favourite. Your favourite. Your my second. Second. And it favorite. wasn't in my list. No. Yep. That's so right. So this one does just pip it, but we're just going to see. Have a little cast around. We've clipped these up at 100 yards now, so a bit further see if they can cope with that and also try and work out what makes them feel so good as a rod. So it's clipped up 100. It's quite wind's properly than mine. picked up now. I was going to say, it's quite a headwind, isn't it? It recovers quickly. I didn't hit the clip. I did before I put the camera on. <laughs> I've done an Ian. Let's walk that back. Oh, it's yeah. only like a rod length. I blame that on the wind picked up since the test shot, but it does recover quickly. Hit a bit of weed now because I didn't quite hit the clip. And you can see, as it's a three pound, I can imagine playing a fish with nice progressive action because the tips mm. are a bit softer. You can still see the backbone though, from yeah. say the real seat to the first eye, that's not bending much at all. No. And then it, it just progresses further down the rod, down to the tip. So let's give that a cast as well, because that was my well, favorite. I feel like I need to hit a clip. Oh, you're gonna- I can't leave it. They're gonna get bored. It's, it's, it's nothing but ego again, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the Joe show. That's hitting it. There we yeah. Go. Just show I can do it. <laughs> but it feels nice. It's, it's balanced as well. Mm. And it's worth noting, I don't think we've picked up on this yet, is that we aren't casting with a rig. So before you all comment saying, oh, it's not a true representation of casting, we couldn't really justify casting around with a live rig probably upwards of 80 times in total today. So Especially with the weed out yeah. in front as well. It's, uh, it's bad enough bringing a lead back, isn't it? And Luke has cracked off two leads already today. So Exactly, so we don't want them to be fishing, do we? There you are, you can deal with that weed. Oh, you can God. have a little try as well. All right. Oh, you feel like a spare part just at the moment, do you? Yeah, I'm quite happy, actually. <laughs> it's quite nice. You are a brilliant rod rest, though. So obviously this was my favourite as well. Uh, it seemed to hit the clip pretty well at 75, so hopefully it'll hit it pretty well at 100 as well. don't, just because you gave me stick for not hitting it on the first time. It didn't crack off. <sighs> God, it was close though, wasn't it? Yeah. So it's hit that pretty easily. Wasn't anywhere near the marker though. <laughs> We're going to put that down to angler error. <laughs> Sorry, what marker, Ian? Do we really need to go into why we don't have a marker? <laughs> no? <sighs> Behind the camera is a massive bird's nest of braid. Yeah. On, on Ian's <laughs> marker. <laughs> Because not only does he not hit the clip properly, he also didn't wrap use, it out properly. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't use distance sticks well, correctly. Like it's giving you a bit of fight, isn't it? It is, but to be fair, it's nice to actually feel the rod and you can get a bit of a gauge on how it would feel playing fish. I mean, this is as close as I get to playing fish anyway, so. Especially on this venue. <laughs> We're not going there. We're at Thorpe Lead today, by the way. Thanks for having us down. Yes, so thank you, Thorpe Lead. Right, Ian, this is are the you... home of where I beat you quite, quite badly in one of our matches. Right, let's cut that a bit as well. Are you having a go with this one? Yep, this come. Was so this was, my, three, this was my second, wasn't it? See if we can go back to hitting the clip again. Yeah. Yeah. You, you hit the clip about four times. I'll give you that at 75 yards. Well, oh, would that have hit? Yes. <laughs> well, it, is, it has hit. <laughs> <laughs> one time. Oh no, what's up? Oh, we did that again. Just drifted the rod. 
to see. How did that feel? Did it give you enough time to feel what the rod felt like? Well, you mean before you slammed the other rod into it? Yes, it was actually very nice. And I, I am glad this definitely is in my top three, 100% out of all the ones we've cast around. It's definitely got a really fast recovery. I watched it then when you cast it and it literally just pings straight back to shape. So it's amazing. It's, if you quickly switch, I'll bring this in just so you can see the difference because that's now your top rod, isn't it? Yeah, this is my... What makes that one better than this one for you? You give that a cast. This way it changes its mind. <laughs> Peer pressure. You can, You're allowed to do more. that. You're allowed you to change, change your mind if it, it, watch, your, watch the tip. God. <laughs> oh, oh no, I'm going to tighten the clutch. <laughs> Move the tip again. Still hit the clip though. Hit the clip on that as well. Oh, yeah. Even with the, uh, even with the clutch slipping. Um, I like this one because the handle length is better for me. That's what it comes down to. Out of the two, they both cast lovely but the longer handle is just yeah more suitable to me. And they do have a slightly different action looking at it now. Yeah. It's that definitely a bit stiffer. more tippy. I think yeah. it looks stiffer. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, like the, that one started bending just after the first eye, but you've almost got the two eyes before it then starts bending. Yeah. It's definitely a different action. I guess we'll see that best in the next test. Yeah, yeah, we will. But let's, um, as, the, as that was my second, let's give that a cast. Also, just for reference what you just said about the handle lengths, put the reels next to each other. Uh, yep, and just get into... So organised. We'll probably get a cutaway of this anyway. So, the handle length. Reel seats matching. Yeah, you've got an extra couple of inches at the bottom there, haven't you? So you like an extra couple of inches then, Ian? That's what it comes down <laughs> to. I think, to. realistically, most people would like an extra couple of inches. <laughs> I was quite happy with this one. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's give this a go then. Clutch tightened? Yep. Snap off. So again, it's, it's hitting that clip easily at 100. I think, I do think the recovery is a bit quicker on that rod six than on this one. Yeah. So I'm glad that I've put that as my top one. And also when we were going through some of the rods, I found that rod three, really that's the one that you liked. I said I wasn't using the full extent of the handle. Yeah, I, you, I, I think, you, it I think it's that little bit too long. Yeah. So for me, even though I'm quite tall now, I still prefer a shorter handle, I believe then, because yeah. I wasn't using all the way down to the base. Yeah. Today. So I really like this. It's, it's hitting good distances. It's accurate as well. But I do think the handle is a little bit long, which is why that one's just pipped it. I think that's the main difference between them. Are you going to have to go with that? A little crack. I'll even leave that Don't a Don't say crack. <laughs> no cracking off. Have a little bit of a crack. Oh, nearly hit Seagull, but it recovers quickly. But yeah. yeah, I think it is just, my hand naturally wants to be there. Yeah, it is not a little there. bit too long. Because that just feels a bit too cumbersome for me. So if we move on to the slow-mo test, so you can actually see the recovery of them and the action, then uh, it's probably the best. Might give a bit more away on why they are excelling above the other ones. Yeah. Is everyone still happy with their choices though? Yeah. 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 I yeah. think they're both just as capable of casting but it comes down to personal preference with the handle. Yeah. I know, I think in both cases, I don't know the actual price of them, but that's a lot of rod for under 100 quid yeah. in both cases. Oh yeah, 100%. In fact, both are easily hitting 100, which for most people is the most you'd ever really fish at. And with a headwind yeah. as well. And the, like none of us are particularly good casters. So if we're hitting 100, then most people could probably hit 100 with these, yeah. with these rods. All right. What about with a solid bag? <laughs> Probably not with a solid. When am I showing how to tie up a solid bag in this video? <laughs> no, cut. So test number two is going to try and replicate the play and action of a rod. Now, ideally we'd catch the same size fish with the same energy levels on that day, but it's just not going to happen. And we'd have to catch 11 of them. So the closest we can get to that for this test is a set of scales anchored to the floor over there, which Ian's going to read two pound worth of uh, pressure on. We've got the same drop of line, which is going from the tip eye down to the very base of the rod. I've stood at the same distance, anchoring the rod in the same point on here. And so everything should be as close as uh, we can get it. So we're going to see how it looks from the progress, how progressive the action is, whether there's any flat spots, anything like that. Do the same amount of pressure on every rod and see if we can see any differences. And it's going to be interesting to see how the ones that came top on the casting came out, uh, how they came out, how it comes out on this one. So we'll start with rod number one. So when Ian tells you I've got the two pound, we're going to stop and take a photo. Uh, 
So there's two pound of pressure. Luke's taking the photo. All right, take him. And there we go, moving on to rod number two. One eternity later. Well, in conclusion of that test, pretty much the polar opposite of the first, because there wasn't a lot of difference in any of them that yeah, I could see from my point. Like all of them felt the same. The only difference I found was rod three, which was clearly stiffer. Casting, was clearly stiffer. I had to put a bit more backbone in, but yeah, not a lot. Yeah, so obviously you, you guys were amongst it. I was behind the camera, so I could see a much flatter profile of it. And then we've been through the photos as well since, and there really isn't much difference. Again, like you say, other than that rod three, which it was clearly stiffer, you had to put more into it, but the actual curvature of the rods didn't seem too different. I know Ian, you zoomed in on a few photos. Yeah, and saw a bit so um, when you zoom in on a couple of the photos, you can notice that the spigot joints, some of them don't bend as as much as like say a premium rod wheel, but just just the way they're manufactured and you know the materials that are used. And realistically, you'd never notice that in a fish playing sort of situation, that not is, in a million it, years. It is nitpicking when you're zooming in on that sort of thing. And yeah, as we said, that's not an extremely accurate sense of playing a fish. Lunges on the rod tip, different power runs and that, but. This is as accurate as we can get it on the bank, showing each rod in exactly the same circumstances. And it's yeah, it's just concluded that they're all pretty much the same, which I think we all agree yeah. means that the casting is all the more important on what rod you go for. Yeah, exactly. And then obviously the aesthetics as well, because at the end of the day, you're going to be staring at them for hours. So Motionless probably, in your case. Motionless rods. So you, you want them to look nice. But yeah, like Curly says, the uh, the casting on it is, it's that's really important. the one to go with, yeah, I think. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So let's move on to the aesthetics now. Sorry. He just brought up aesthetics, the yeah. least, the least well dressed. We don't need to go into that. This is this is harassment. This is like online bullying. I'm messaging HR about your glasses. <laughs> okay, so next up, it's about time we took a look at the aesthetics of the rods and basically what we favour. Obviously, all of this is personal preference. There's no uh, scientific sort of idea between what you do and don't like. I personally have got a few things that I always look for in a carp fishing rod, and that is generally a slim cork handle. And I am definitely a fan of the um, sort of the, the slimmer style guides. A slim cork, so that narrows it down to one rod. Yeah, so <laughs> the one that you've already so, got before on cast. That might have so been the one that I already picked as my favourite. So we've got Ian's winner. Ian likes number three <laughs> overall. No, let's start with number one. And I don't know how we're going to do this without wiping yeah. people out. Yeah. Uh, it is, it's a nice slim blank. So that's plus yeah. points in my mind. Matt Black. Um, Matt Black sort of Matt finish. Black all the way, apart from a little bit just above the real seat. You can just which has see carbon. a sneaky bit of red whip in there as red well. Whipping. Um, yeah. <laughs> a little logo just <laughs> under the real seat. A little seat. logo on that real seat. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, overall, it is a nice looking rod. Do you want to look at it? The guide's I've seen nice it. You've been well, waving it in front of my face all day, much, Luke. <laughs> and I could see the rod. So uh, we're all good. <laughs> right, so right that's let's number put that one. one down. Number two. Now, for me, I do like cork. I do like a cork handle, but this is thick. This yeah. is a bit too yeah, thick yeah. for my liking. Um, the guides are quite thick as well. I've also just noticed it's matte black on the base section of the rod, and up here it's almost like exposed textured carbon. Almost okay. like it's two different Two rods. different, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm not, not, a, me, but I'm not a huge fan. I don't, yeah, I don't think I'm a fan of that on the whole, personally. Number, oh, number three. three. What, do you want to say anything about this? Do you wanna, one? Do you take I could the probably, lead? I could probably have a little look at this one because. Uh, Is it safe to? It does have a uh, a really nice slim cork handle which uh, like I said earlier is definitely something I would be looking at. Uh, green whippings in a metallic metallic green which are nice on a matte black blank. Uh, yeah, I mean the only thing that I would probably change the is the guides. The ceramics in the guides are quite thick. They're also like a gunmetal colour which I think would be a bit more a bit nicer in an understated black. But other than that, yeah, oh, very oh, nice. Oh, it does look quite, yeah. Even the, the font's quite nice as well yeah, that they've chosen. Yeah, it's just a nice looking rod and uh, performs rather well. I, the only thing I'm not too sure of is having that little bit exposed, exposed before the real seat. To me, that should be cork all the way. Yeah. That's almost like the extra two inches that they put on the handle. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, overall, it, it, is, it a, is a nice, a nice looking, looking rod. rod. I, mean, I do agree with the um, eyes, and I'm also a big fan of cork. Yeah. But I actually prefer the chunkier cork. Do you? Yeah, really That's interesting. So this, I quite like. I like carbon weave. I like seeing that throughout. The little gold whippings look nice as well. Yeah. The actual handle looks nice. A nice slim handle. Yeah. Got the a little flare nice. on the end. Got the flare. The yeah. eyes. The eyes, yeah, the eyes slim are thin. Well. So I think this, for me, if we're talking just aesthetics, I think this is one of the top runners. 
yeah. person. I don't person. Yeah. Yeah. It's got um, all the bits and pieces, and not it? So that's, that's number four. But unfortunately for me, that didn't really do much when it came to casting. No. So moving on to number five. Again, this is this is nice. Very similar. Like yeah. the actual exposed carbon look to it. Yeah. Nice matte black eyes, fin fin guides as well. Decent real seat, carbon line clip, which is always nice as well. Little flared handle. Little flared handle. Yeah, yeah. quite a nice one. Can't really ask Plus much six more. is what came overall top with the casting. Yeah, so we'll let you but take that. I will. But I have to say, it's gone down the understated route, but I think it's just a little bit too dull. Yeah. It's all black which is for some people. Actually, the eyes are quite chunky as well on this one, similarly to yeah. what we said about number three. three. Mm -hmm. um, so I think they're very similar eyes, actually, but I do like that that's black rather than the... Yeah, the black smoke. looks better. But overall, it's... Yeah, because I like cork cans, I like a bit of showiness to a rod. I just think it's a bit too dull for me. I wonder if you can get these in cork. We'll find out when we know what they are later <laughs> the on. The only thing yeah. that I think I, would, I don't like about it is the fact that everything's black, and then on the real seat, they've used grey collars. Yeah. Which is, it kind is of doesn't a, really a fit. premium feel to it, so it's not, it doesn't look just black. I, I mean, it know. is a Fuji real seat, which is good quality. They're yeah. some of the best real seats you can get, aren't they? So, yeah. yeah. Nice. Number seven, as we're getting close to me, Robin, you keep reaching over. Mm -hmm. Again, it's quite a glossy finish, this one, not textured, but it's still exposed. It's almost like a... It's very varnished. A clear it? varnish over the... Yeah, I mean... Carbon. It's another mid-range budget rod, isn't it? It's nothing flashy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the eyes are nice, the guides are nice, nice and thin. I think, realistically, the finish is the, the most standout feature. Like, the, the fact that it's so glossy, because yeah. all look the at, others are definitely guys, not. Yeah. All of them are pretty, apart from actually number 11, which you go on to, all mm -hmm. of them, I think, look fairly matte. Yeah, apart from this one, from which this is shiny. One. Yeah. yeah, so it's nice to have something a bit different. If yeah. I'm honest, the gloss isn't for me. Mm -hmm. But the guides are nice, and the flared handle, again, is nice. Now, number eight, again, we've got that exposed carbon, fairly matte. Yeah. Gloss black whippings. I'm starting to sound like a, uh, repeating ourselves. A lot of these yeah. are very, very similar. Yeah, the guides are very thick. Actually, the only on thing one, is, though, is. like the blank itself is very thick. Like yeah. that, in com that's as thick as that cork handle yeah. that's on that rod. It's almost, almost like a yeah. spod rod. Yeah. <laughs> if you picked up a high end spod rod, it would feel it would very be like similar. that. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that's that would be a knife. From, but what I'm, yeah. as we we'll keep going through these, but what I'm finding quite interesting that I thought now is that I wonder if all of these features that a lot of these are quite similar oh. is a price point budget yeah. issue. Like yeah. they can't go too big. But on the eyes, some of them the have got nicer guides, Absolutely. and then some of them got nicer handles. So is it a compromise yeah. that you get one or the yeah, other? Yeah. If you're looking to have the better guides, the better handle, the better real seat, mm -hmm. are you then into the next price bracket? Yeah. I guess so that must it's, be what it is. It's almost a case of these are all fairly budget rods and you can't have everything. Yeah. Mm. So. See, this one is almost, the cork handle's even thicker again than those two. Yeah. And it, that they've almost done that to sort of it's flush negate with, the fact that that's so, the yeah. blank itself is so thick. It almost looks flush with the real seat. Looking down here, yeah. that cork's so thick that it's almost flush. It, yeah, it's yeah. very thick. It almost feels like a beach rod. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah well, here's the... Oh, it's light. First thing I noticed picking this up, this is the three piece, number mm -hmm. 10, got a line clip on there, but you've got various, you've got exposed carbon here and there, but everywhere else is sort of matte black, matte black. covered. The it eyes, the only think, thing for me is just, it's the how small the eyes are. And I think that's why it's so light. Yeah. Or yeah. a big part to play in it. Because yeah. um, guides are heavy. There is actually some really faint, like gold whipping in there, look, like right on the edges. Um, but that's so dark, like you been, wouldn't even see it. It's been glossed over, so it's dulled it too much. Yeah. It's nothing mm. up this end. Yeah. Now this one is the only one looking at them, maybe other than number three, which has the bit of, oh, and four actually, the little bits of whipping. But this is the most garish when it comes to a, yeah. a bright splash of color. Anyway. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is definitely out there. It's, yeah. Um, very glossy, very- uh, Not as shiny as uh, number seven. No. Nope. But it's it's close. Again, you've got the the big guides on it. Uh, the, I mean, the orange is actually, it's quite nice. It's it's okay. Um, <laughs> but this, this is the one that we thought seemed a cheap rod that actually performed really well. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to know the actual price the, the of price it. Of yeah, because I think, I think this, this might is be probably like a, a 30, lot of... Like this a is 30 a, quid rod or something. Yeah, and it's a lot of rod for that sort of money. We might be wrong, this might it be could 100 quid. completely yeah. wrong, yeah. <laughs> it's like all of this is personal preference. Yeah. Just, we could be way off. 
So I think that's the aesthetics all signed up. Have we have we got winners? I if I'm I could chop and change, no, I'd you have, can't. Well, I'd go for number six with number two's cork. <laughs> well, I think for me, number four, that as an overall winner on aesthetics. Yeah, it does look nice. I think it looks the nicest. I think it looks the classiest out of them. Well, um, surprise, surprise. <laughs> oh, you're going for number three. <laughs> I'm going to go for number three again. So, yeah, for me, that number three rod has been a stand up rod pretty much all day. Mm. I guess that so. brings it all down to price then, lads. Yeah. yeah. So, and what they are. And what they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, back to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> the big reveal. So it's probably time for the big reveal. Now we do have an audience of geese behind us. Which will which probably creep into shot. They're slowly, they're slowly coming forward. But should we start with number one? Well, that makes sense. So number one is... God, you picked some strong <laughs> tape. Gorilla you? tape. I said it was Gorilla tape. <laughs> Vader X. So we've got a Sonic. So that Vader X RS even. So that is a Sonic rod. Now, you guys sure. would have seen which ones all of these are all the way through, but this is the reveal for us. <laughs> yep, Sonic Vader X RS. You had to take the second bit of tape off. You know, so I think you knew it. Was <laughs> I Vader. knew it was Sonic. But... Uh, number two. So this was a nice cork one. Again, let's see how we cope with this tape. Oh, it's Witchwood. So Witchwood. Oh no. Uh, Witchwood, Riot, twelve foot three pound. So we are. Okay. There you go. Ian, you've got number three. Number Sorry, three. We didn't actually explain this to you. <laughs> doing one each. <laughs> so, okay, cool. Number so three. Obviously, you've got number three. So this you was my favourite one. So, let's see what we can find under here. I'll leave that bit on because it's the number three bit. Oh, yeah, should we have done that? <laughs> Did you take it off? Yeah. Okay, there was no branding under that bit. Just a. Oh, yeah, it says TX. TX1A1A. So, I'm going to go with that's probably a Shimano. Yeah, so it's a Shimano oh. TX1. Nice. Shimano? Which, yeah, that was my favourite word of the day, basically. So, wow. yeah, pretty cool, we'll that. that. Okay. Yeah, number four. Number four. So, this is the one that I thought looked the nicest aesthetically. That looks pro logic y by the colours. Do you reckon? Element. Yep. So, oh. this is the pro logic element. I won't bother taking the four off. But if you look, if you're after a nice looking rod, and this is the one to go for. And I have actually been using them quite a lot in the ProLogic Versus series. Yes. Elements. Yep. That, that's why I noticed the colours, so everybody just noticed it then. Number four. This one's fairly understated. That's five. Number five, Number five sorry. <laughs> Very understated. Losing track. Ooh. It's, oh, it's the X. Is that the Nash one? Nash X300. There we go. Okay, so that was one of your favourites, was it? I think that was my mm. third favourite. Is that your third? third? Yeah. I thought it was in... In the it was in the top three. You don't yeah. have to do that every time. I do. <laughs> nice. Moving on to number six. We will get all the price of these and then round up in the next scene. So uh, okay. So number six wasn't this. This was the winner. This the was basically the winner. Over, overall winner, wasn't yeah. it? So this is quite a big, quite big a big reveal. reveal. <sighs> it's like working with children. A big reveal where I can't get the tape back off. <laughs> We've ruined the rod twice <laughs> for glue residue. <laughs> The branding will come off. <laughs> oh god, it, it literally won't come off. There we go. Okay, well that's a Dower okay. logo, or Daiwa, depending Daiwa. on who you are, where you are, and how you say it. <laughs> but what rod is it? The, oh, it's it's on a Bezier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who checked that one in there? Vertice? Would you say it Vertice? Vertice. I would, but I don't think I've heard of that oh, before. No. Vertice. Maybe it's no. one of the like, newer ones, maybe. There we go. There we go. Yeah, oh, see cool. the price of these, because that's yeah. come out as our overall top rod. Number six. Oh, it's seven. Me. Number seven. It's like so. Christmas presents, isn't it? Wait yeah. for your siblings to open, then it's your turn again. Oh, you've seven, already I've played got... with them. Yeah. No idea what this one might be. Actually, there's a little, there's obviously a logo covered here. Sonic. Another Sonic. Oh, so Another Sonic. Two. That's part of it. So Sonic have got at least two rods under a hundred pound within yeah. their range. Yeah. That's Dominator XRS. Going. Is that one of the ones in the casting we said felt like it could cast further? I'll check. Quite possibly. Before we move on, because I remember us saying that one of them felt like they were a bit beefier, and if it is, that would make sense because the Vaders are a bit different. Obviously, different to the I Dominators. Mean, that's, yeah, that's the yeah. Dominator. I thought it definitely feels capable of bigger casts, which makes okay. sense for the Dominators. They yeah. are meant to be. Uh, hold your horses. <laughs> This did have a line clip, but someone taped over it. So we didn't mention that. And this is 
Exodus Pro. So we've got an Avid rod here. Is that number eight? This was number eight, so yes. I believe this is one that we said it felt a lot stronger. Wasn't that than, your favourite? Than a three pound. It was, no, it was up there. It was one of the it was in your top three, it? Was it? In, the, in my top three, and it felt like it would cast a lot further than what we did. Cool. Number nine. Okay, so this was the one with the really thick blank and the thick cork handle. It's girthy, isn't it? And the rod. Okay, so that is a JRC Defender. Okay. Nice. With a cork handle. Number 10. JRC Defender. That's a three piece. This is a three piece. Oh, three piece. Oh, I was getting confused. We've just, just done two like, of the yeah. same rods. <laughs> yeah, so this is, this is a Defender three piece. Okay. Interesting then, because I didn't really. We didn't realise that, of course, because we didn't know what each of the rods, but I wouldn't have said they were the same. No, no. not casting one after no. the other. That one definitely feels softer and it's just a different set. Yeah. So I wonder if that is meant to be a surface rod, like we've been saying. Yeah. In fact, they've already got a 12 foot defender. Quite possibly, yeah. Uh, and number 11, this is the one with the. Oh, so this is so the, this the one, one that we. we thought mm. could be cheaper, yeah. but. Yeah, I'm intrigued by the price nice. of this one. Rogue. Rogue. Leader. Leader. I guess so. Is Rogue not the brand? This is really bad. It's nothing on the bottom. So, I mean, Rogue. it's quite a Rogue rod. <laughs> yes. Hopefully, we'll, we'll find out in the next scene. <laughs> We're going to Google all of these, check exactly what the prices are at the point of filming. And of course, hopefully, they're still all under £100. It should be. Otherwise, it's um, been a null and void test. Let's, but yeah. let's find the rod scene for Rogue. it and work out what it is. Nice. Okay, so that's all of them unpeeled. So let's move on to summary with prices. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Well, we've gone through the prices and we've got our two favourites here. So let's get into it. I know there's three <laughs> rods. There, rod. <laughs> there are three rods. I'm not that bad at maths. This one we'll come on to afterwards. Yeah, so the overall winner for me was the Daiwa Vertice or Vertice. I've not heard of this one before, but uh, very pleasantly surprised because this one comes in at just £58 a rod. And we said pretty much cast the best out of all of them, joint with. Ian's, which you get onto mm -hmm. in a second, which he's been loving all day. It's no surprises there, that one's one for him. But yeah, 58 pound a rod, you really can't complain. It hit 100 yards easily, did mm -hmm. 75 close, uh, closer and much more accurately. So, And very, you say the good. overall winner for you, but to be honest, that's the overall winner of the day. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. Cool. I don't know why well, that it's... died then, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, next up, obviously, Basically second place, realistically, wasn't it? Yeah, first uh, in your eyes. Yeah, first in my eyes. TX1 from Shimano with the cork handle. Um, come out about £80. So it's so actually the most expensive one, isn't it, out mm -hmm. of all of the ones that we've picked. But overall, fantastic value for money. And like you say, 100 yards, not a problem. Probably even a bit more if you wanted to. Um, yeah, can't, can't moan about yeah. it at all. No, both, both very good rods. Go on then. Tell us why you've got the now, uh, last one. This one, we found out is a leader rod. This is a leader rogue. And it didn't quite make it into any of our top threes, but it was close and we were impressed with it. We we're thinking it was going to be the cheapest of the lot. I think it probably is. Probably we we is. didn't actually look at the prices of all of them, but this comes out at just 39 quid. So you can get a set of four of these for un four? A set of three of these. <laughs> Numbers aren't your strong point. You've already said that. <laughs> <laughs> for under 120 quid. And that's a hell of a lot of rod yeah. full of money. Yeah, so really if you are a little bit more budget conscious, if you're just getting into sport and you're wanting a good set of rods that aren't going to break the bank, now all of these are fairly budget sensible, uh, but to get these at yeah, under 40 quid a rod, mm -hmm. yeah. Bargain. That's, that is a bargain. Is a bargain. And yeah. that's the overall overriding thing is that all the rods we have today have done every single test they've needed to. Mm. So it does come down to the aesthetics, like what you actually like the look of on your rods and the price. So yes, this one's one for me, but it's at £58 a rod might be a bit too much for you. That one's even more expensive. Mm. Again, maybe it's just because we have slightly more expensive tastes, but it's proof that you can get a cheaper rod yeah. that does all the same as what these two do. do. Yeah. But it's not a Daiwa, it's not a Shimano, it's a, a Rogue, a leader yeah. Rogue, which I don't think any of us would have looked at before, but as a, yeah, shot yeah. through to the top at the end because it's just mm. such good value yeah. for money. Real yeah. little wild card type thing that yeah. no one mm -hmm. expected. No, no, exactly. So thanks again to all the suppliers that have got in contact with us, supplied the rods, and obviously thanks again to Fort Plea for having us down here. Mm -hmm. Just a reminder that any of the rods that you didn't see in this test is purely because 
said companies it didn't want to be involved. So yes, there's more rods in this mm. price point, but of the rods that we were able to use in this test, they've all been included. And that's should, our results. We should probably also mention that the rods that were supplied, there was no sort of money exchanged hands. No. There was no agreement that we'd include their rods in the video for mm -hmm. any particular reason. So no. yeah, proper impartial little review. Yeah, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. It's the first of many comparisons to come. So let us know your feedback. Let us know how you'd want things done differently, if you would prefer them differently. Without the glasses. And they've, the crack They've offs. been relegated to... And the tangling of and, marker floats. And hitting the clip would be nice. Yeah. And the slowest... I, I would say existence. we've got some improvements to make. <laughs> we'll anyway, see you, we'll hopefully see you it's next been one. enjoyable. Thank you. <laughs> so unorganised. We actually did this in a day, though. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah.